Welcome to the Spirit Filled Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Burak. This is a podcast where we believe the world needs disciples and disciples need spirit filled leadership. We're so grateful that you're joining us again for this episode. And today's episode is If Becomes Because. If Becomes Because. I've noticed something that uh, has infested, has entered into the conversation around identity recently for myself and then a lot of other people that I've talked about. And we talked about identity on this podcast before, but I want to circle back to that because foundationally, it's just so critical that we know who we are, what we're made for, where we're going. We know what the Lord says about us and that we live from the truth of that reality, not from any other truth. And what I've started to notice is that there are some certain truths that we believe, but that a word has been added to that belief, a very small word, but a very significant word that radically changes the expression of that belief. So what am I talking about? So I've noticed that there's a way at which we believe we are loved. So I'd say you are loved. And a huge portion of you who are watching uh, or listening would agree with that, that I am loved or I am chosen or I'm set apart or I'm wanted or I'm good. There's, there's like there's these deep beliefs that are, are true that the Lord speaks over us that we'll talk into we'll talk in a minute about how that plays out but there's this sense of like I am loved but then this word has been introduced to that statement that radically changes the expression and the experience of that truth and that word is if I am loved if. I am loved if people say they love me. I am loved if I feel loved. I am loved if I get good grades. I am loved if I have a following. I am loved if I'm noticed. I am loved if I'm not lonely. I am loved if I'm married. I'm loved if I'm fruitful. I am loved if. And I just invite you right in the moment, as you're listening to this, to pause and just like give me that phrase. Say it. I am loved. And then does the word if emerge? Because if the word if emerges, then I would venture a guess that whatever comes after that if is not of the Lord. Because what if introduces into the statement is all of a sudden there's a transaction that emerges. There's a give and a take. All of a sudden, the unconditional love of God becomes conditional. In that moment when if is introduced, my worth, my lovability, is that even a word, Miguel? I don't know. My ability to be loved and to experience that love is put, a condition is put on that. A transaction is established. A new covenant actually is made that is not out of a covenant of God. We suddenly start to allow our identity, which should be firmly and fully Uh, expressed and coming from the heart of our Father, it starts to get corrupted by some other covenants with the world. Now I'm loved if, I'm good if, I'm chosen if, I'm wanted if, though whatever comes after if is not of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus, the love that he has for you, the identity that he offers to you from a covenant relationship with him is not transactional, it's invitational. It's not conditional, it's unconditional. What Jesus Christ does on the cross is he pays the cost that we owe. He does it all, pays it all, lays it all down for us. He takes it all on himself so that that new identity that emerges, that new man, that when we are crucified with Christ, that we enter into faith with him, all of a sudden what is transactional, the world demands our our worth and our, our ability to be loved and to experience love. Transactional, conditional love is transformed from if to because. I am loved because Jesus says so. I am loved because God is love. And he first loved me. And because he first loved me, now I am able to love others. I am good because he is good. And through the the blood and the water that washes over me, I become good. I am holy because he is holy. I am chosen because he chooses me. I am wanted because he wants me. Full stop. That's the truth of our identity. 
And so when we allow, when we make like kind of that covenant, that agreement with the world, when we allow the if to emerge and we come into agreement with whatever follows the if, our core identity, which is so foundational to being a spiritual leader, gets corrupted, gets transformed, get mixed together. And all of a sudden, we're kind of living partially as a son or daughter of God and partially as a son or daughter of the world. And our leadership suffers, our fruitfulness suffers, but most importantly, our peace suffers, our joy suffers, our fruitfulness suffers, our ability to be who we are suffers. God is love. We love because he first loved us. We were once sons and daughters of wrath. Now through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are sons and daughters of God. That because, that trans, that's transfer of power, that transfer of life is an action of God that we then cooperate. Now, what's interesting, and some of you are probably picking up on this, is the if of the world becomes the because of God, but then Jesus builds on that foundation by adding new ifs to our life. So if becomes because, but then becomes if. But the new ifs that he invites us into, the new uh, kind of invitations are not transactional, they're transformational. They're not transactional, they're invitational for our benefit. Jesus starts to invite us into obedience to him. Why? Because that obedience leads to the life that we want. The obedience leads to the the fullness, the completion of who we are, the full transformation both here on earth, the process begins, and then ultimately culminates in heaven. We... (laughs) We, we can then readily accept these new ifs like, you are my friends if you do what I command you. If anyone would follow me, let him pick up his cross and follow me. There's these new kind of invitations and um, calls to obedience that emerge, but they're emerging out of love. They're emerging not out of uh, a conditional love, but an unconditional love. What Jesus is saying is, I love you no matter what. But if you want to remain in my love, if you want to abide in my love, if you want to be transformed by my love, then you need to obey. You need to believe. You need to walk with me. You need to be in covenant relationship with the Father through me in the power of the Holy Spirit. So the if of the world is transactional and conditional based on a a fickle love, that is broken and transformed by Jesus Christ to become a, a because that is invitational and unconditional. And then that love is ours should we then want it and cooperate with it and abide in it. So how do we abide? Well, the first thing we do is we obey. John 14, as the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. You will abide in my love if you obey my commandments. And we've talked about obedience on the podcast before, but I keep coming back to it because as a spiritual leader, it is unbelievably important that we obey Jesus. I know that's like a, like Miguel, that's like earth shattering, isn't it? But if you want to be a spiritual leader, you have to obey the master. And what does that obedience generate? It generates intimacy, not servanthood. It it, it generates intimacy. I no longer call you slaves, Jesus says. For a slave doesn't know what a master is doing. I call you friends. And he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. The intimacy we long for and that unity with the Father comes from obedience and abiding in God's love. And then Jesus gives us a little hint of what that abiding does, that obedience leads to. It leads to unbelievable joy. Remember in John 14, John 15, he says, um, If you abide in my love, you obey my commandments. My joy will be in you and your joy will be full. Pretty transformational. So the first thing is obedience. The second thing is um, we need to, if we really want to kind of live in this new reality and hold on to this new reality, we need to um, embrace the cross and we need to suffer. We need to be willing to suffer. We need to unite our sufferings with Jesus, which which is interesting. How does suffering keep us united? Well, remember, suffering is an opportunity for greater trust and greater participation and greater union in uh, divine action. Jesus actually asks us to pick up our cross, but the difference is of when we pick up our cross on our own and pick up our cross with him, when we do it on our own, it's not fruitful, it's not edifying, it's not, it, it doesn't transform us because we're, it's all about us. When we unite it with Jesus, he helps us carry it, he shows us how to carry it, and he confirms the deepest identity of who we are through the purification that comes through suffering. One of the things that suffering does is it, it strips off and it, it kind of power washes off of us the gunk that has we've allowed to to kind of 
glob onto who we are. So our identity becomes more fully alive as kind of children of God when we participate in whatever suffering comes our way. It's not to say that, again, that that suffering is something that God sends us because he he doesn't like us. It's more of like as the, the suffering of the world emerges around us, when we unite it to the Lord, when we trust him, when we in an act of faith submit to it, the Lord is able to use that to purify us and make us more who we're supposed to be. And then finally, to live in this identity of moving from if to because to if is a, is a movement of the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to understand this. It's impossible to believe this. It's impossible to remain in it. It's impossible to be fruitful from it. It's impossible to to really kind of lay hold and, and experience in a deep transforming way the love of God unless we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and we cooperate with that Spirit. I mean, Spirit-filled leadership, this is foundational to what we believe on this podcast, but the Spirit of God has been poured into our hearts to confirm this identity, to purify this identity, to empower us in this identity, and to launch us into being able to lead other people in this identity. So, the main thing from this podcast, though, from this episode, is I want you to spend some time thinking about where have I put an if in my life? What statements, what beliefs have I, am I living from where instead of because, it's if. I am loved if, I am good if, I am chosen if, I am fruitful if, as opposed to because. And then wherever there's an if, an unholy if, whenever there's a worldly if, take authority over it in the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke it and say, be gone. You are not a part of my life. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against the lie that I am loved if I'm seen. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus and be gone. And then speak the truth over. I am loved because he says so. I am loved because you love me first. I am loved because you laid down your life for me and demonstrate that love by offering that life to me now. And as you do that, Don't be surprised when Jesus introduces new ifs, but those new ifs, those new commands, those new opportunities for obedience will be a source of great joy, a great source of great purity, and a source of great fruitfulness if we submit to it. So, if becomes because. Find the unholy ifs in your heart and your mind, get rid of them, and replace them with because. This has been the Spirit-Filled Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Bragg. We got Miguel behind the camera. If you'd like more information about what we're doing with this podcast or anything else we're doing, you can go to spiritfilledleadership.com or intentionaldisciples.com. As always, this podcast grows if you help it grow. So if it's been good for you, share it, like it, rate it, comment, review it. I don't know, whatever else you want to do. But get the word out. We're a growing community of spirit-filled leaders and the world needs us and Jesus has need of us and it's so good that you are with us and we'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. Thanks. Come take my hand. We'll 